Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me here today in our stress reduction course. It is a pleasure to have you with me. I ask that you find yourself in a comfortable, seated or laying pose. Whatever feels good for you, may you find that position. Maybe you can grab a blanket as we are finding ways to get comfortable here today. As you all know, this is our very first session for our stress reduction course. And in this course, we are going to work on ways to relax, soothe, and calm our mind and our bodies in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic. We have been dealing with this pandemic for almost a year now. And for many of us, we are patiently awaiting for normality to come back. And for others, we are starting to feel and build up a little bit more stress and anxiety because of the longevity of this pandemic. And this is where this stress reduction course comes in. Despite our situation and what we are all going through, we are looking for ways to relax and unwind, despite not being able to do all the things that we normally do, despite not being able to go to all of the places we normally go to. So when we find ourselves limited to what we like to do, how do we react and behave to those circumstances? For many of us, we adapt. And even when we do adapt, we may have days of anxiety and anxiousness because we are all human. But we find our way back to our sanity and we realize Getting ahead of ourselves and getting over anxious isn't going to solve anything. So once again, we bring ourselves back to our stress reduction course today. And many of you may be wondering, what is stress reduction? So I am going, I am going to read to you from an evidence-based um, study um, that I actually found this article in a medical journal. And this one is from the Salem Press Encyclopedia of Health. And in reference to mindfulness-based stress reduction, they go on to say, the term mindfulness refers to a person paying close attention to the experience occurring at the exact present moment. Meaning we are paying attention to what is going on in the current moment, at that moment in time. This is sometimes referred to as being present, right here, right now. Being present also includes focusing on becoming aware of how a certain state of mind is affecting our body at any given moment. That is awareness, being aware of how a situation, a person, a thing, a song makes us feel that is being mindful, that is being aware. The process involves encouraging participants to explore patterns of thoughts, feelings, and responses without judgment. Meaning without judging ourselves, having the feelings, realizing the feelings and the thoughts without placing judgment on ourselves, simply being aware, simply noticing without judgment. The overall goal of mindfulness is being aware. We use mindfulness to identify healthy ways to deal with our feelings, thoughts, and emotions without judgment, without beating ourselves up, without being mean and unkind to ourselves. So this stress reduction article um, is cited on your course syllabus. So if you wanted to go back and read that exact article from the medical journal, 
it is on your course syllabus and you have the link right there for your convenience. And for week one, our topic is what is mindfulness-based stress reduction? We all can come up with our own interpretation and ways of being mindful. We hear a definition, we take in what the definition means, and we make it our own. We discover ways and techniques, methods that works best for us based on the understanding and the knowledge that we received through outside sources. That is learning, that is growing, getting information and making it your own positively and optimistically. Non-conformist ways, free thinkers. Now that we have worked on what mindfulness is, I bring our attention back to our sitting or laying posture. If we are seated in a seated pose, may we get comfortable in that seat. Crossing our legs in Indian style if that feels good for us. If we are lying down in our bed or sitting on our sofa, relaxing on our yoga mat, wherever we choose to be, may we get comfortable. Allowing our bodies and our minds to go inward. Maybe we can lower our eyes downward towards the earth. Using the down gaze to help us relax and go inward here today. Maybe we can take a nice deep intentional breath in. Inhaling. Holding a breath for a couple seconds as we exhale through our mouth. Maybe we notice with our exhale how our shoulders relax down away from our shoulders. Inhale. Holding a breath. Exhale through the mouth. Noticing how our bodies feel with each inhale and exhale as we gaze downward towards the earth. Using a breath and a down gaze to help us relax, to help us become present right here, right now. Simply being one with where we are awareness of what we are doing and how we are feeling without judgment being aware and noticing simply noticing relaxing maybe we can tuck our tummy in nice and tight noticing how that feels Continuing to keep our gaze downward. Maybe our hands are relaxing on our laps. Maybe we decided to do prayer hands. Maybe our hands are on the floor. Wherever we are, may we take notice of what we are doing and how we are feeling. Without judgment finding ease, finding comfort. Finding ways to be okay in silence. Finding ways to be okay with ourselves. Simply noticing how we feel in this moment sitting by ourselves, feeling contentment with ourselves. Nothing else is going on. And even if it is, we are focused here, not easily distracted by outside noises, not easily distracted by outside noises. We may hear it, we may notice it, 
we won't be distracted by it. See the difference? Hearing and noticing, being aware of whatever may be going around and being aware of whatever may be going on around us, but not letting it affect us negatively. That is mindfulness. That is mindfulness, being aware, understanding, realizing, and not letting outside situations take us off of our track, take us off of our path of where we are right here right now. That is being mindful. And that is also being in control of ourselves. As a society trying to get back to normal, places are starting to open back up again. It may be a limited capacity. We might not be able to go over and talk to someone who we knew from high school, someone who we used to work with because we got that social distancing thing going on. Or maybe we can pull up our mask, go over, stand a couple feet away, say, hello, how are you? But we can't sit down and conversate with them. We can't hug them like we used to. But that's okay, because we are making the best out of the situation that we are in safely and healthy. And being able to see a friend and saying hello from afar and talking to them from a couple feet away is better than not seeing them at all. Interaction, even sitting in FaceTime, is better than not seeing someone at all. A person is unable to FaceTime so we call them and speak with them. A person doesn't have a phone, so we write them. It may take days to hear back, but we are still communicating. We write them, they write us back. What we are doing here is we are making the best of the situation that life has dealt us, opposed to saying what we cannot do. We are focusing on what we can do. And that is what this course here is all about, is focusing on what we are able to do in the midst of what we are all experiencing at this point in time of our lives. Being aware is key. Being aware really is key because we live in a world where so many people are unaware of their thoughts, of their feelings. We live in a world where so many people are unaware of their triggers. We live in a world where so many people don't even realize when they said or did something that was negative to another. We live in a world where we want everything here and now. And once that moment comes when we cannot have the things we want here and now, even as adults, some of us may become agitated. And that's what we want to work on, noticing our agitation because we can't get what we want. Because honestly, as adults, we are supposed to be able to handle ourselves in spite of not getting what we want. We teach our children or other people's children. We teach them by example. You can't always get what you want, but that doesn't mean you have to have a temper tantrum. We don't, we don't always get what we want, but that doesn't mean we have to become stressed and feel anxiety and feel as though that the world is against us because it's not. That's just the way life is, you know? We go through ups and downs. We have good days, bad days, good years, bad years. We have pandemics, we have had epidemics throughout life cycle. What have our ancestors done and the people before us? What have they done? They adapted to change and they did and they took the needed precautions to help the epidemic or pandemic become under control. That is what adults do. 
we take responsibility and we behave in a manner that's going to save us and save our society. I recently read a quote from an unknown author that states, every situation in life is temporary. So when life is good, make sure you enjoy and receive it fully. And when life is not so good, remember that it will not last forever and better days are on the way. That's some words of wisdom right there. So let's do a little bit more research here and see what else we can speak about. I took the liberty of, of um, jotting down um, a couple of responses from the pre-course survey. And um, one person wrote, this was, the, this was the question, when I feel stressed or anxious, I often, so when I feel stressed, my mind often spins and I worry. And I would like to say, when our mind spins and worries, what effect does that have on our mind and our bodies? Someone else wrote, when I'm extremely overwhelmed, I have a hard time concentrating. I get quiet and withdrawn and shut down emotionally. That is the point of this course here, is to be aware of how we feel and find positive and constructive ways to um, help us overcome what we are going through. One person said, when I get stressed, they actually do yoga practices and breathing exercises and they found it beneficial, you know? So it says in the midst of COVID-19, um, I like to practice yoga. I like to work on my breathing. I find that it helps soothe and relax me. So this person is obviously finding ways to relax and go inward with their breath, which if we try it, we will find that it really do, it really does have an effect, a positive effect on our bodies when we breathe in, breathe out. And it works for many people. But we gotta want it to work. We gotta feel it to be working. You know, it's that power of attraction. If you want it, believe it and feel it, it works. If we feel, oh, breathing doesn't work, and we're dead set against it, we're not gonna feel the benefit of it because that's just the way our bodies are set up. So one person wrote, when I feel stress and anxiety, I, I really don't have a specific technique that I do. Um, and they are aware of that. They are aware of that. And that's a beautiful thing. I don't have a technique that we do that I do when I feel anxiety, stress. And again, the purpose of this course is to come up with techniques that will help us go inward. And one of those techniques could be what someone just said was I practice yoga or I practice breathing exercises or mindfulness, simply just being aware and using a breath to calm and soothe. Another person wrote, um, when, I, when I feel stress, anxious, or anxiety, I, I dance and sing. Dancing and singing is a beautiful thing. You're working with the breath when you're singing, and when you're dancing and moving, we are, awaken, we are awakening the cells within our bodies, which brings happiness and joy. And that is what we need for health and well-being. A sad body, a sad mind does not produce a happy body. So dancing and singing, <laughs> bravo. That is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So, so we have a painter and a writer in the mix. So uh, painting, it helps you relax, go inward. And it also helps you gather your thoughts, your thoughts, not my thoughts, not so-and-so's thoughts, but your thoughts. We take into consideration what other people say. But when we sing, dance, paint, write, we are basically listening to ourselves. We are sitting and doing something, painting, writing, dancing, singing, breathing, and we are helping ourselves come up with our own way of going inward and dealing with whatever we may be going through. I think this is a great idea to just read a couple things from the pre-course surveys, um, which will give us something to think about and also give us something to um, discuss because again this course is about you it's a, it's a nice teaching tool this is what we call peer counseling we use other people's stories other other people's responses to help us see what needs to be seen 
and help us feel what needs to be feel, felt. And of course, some people, some people who are entering this course are dealing with the pandemic fine, or they just might want to find other ways to just relax. Um, for myself, I know I like to take mindfulness classes and yoga classes through other people and um, stress reduction courses through other people because it gives me a different way of thinking. You know, it also allows me to connect with other people and see what's going on with other people. You know, so just because someone is taking a course doesn't mean they're, they have anxiety or stressors within their lives. It doesn't mean that they are not dealing with COVID-19 well. It just means that taking these classes is helping them cope. It's how they cope. It's, it's what's keeping them sane, you know? So it's a beautiful thing. Where still we have some people who, you know, haven't found that balance yet of the old life and the new life. One person who started the course, you know, just said, it's just going on for too long. I just need change. And I told them about this course and they were willing to attend and um, I'm very thankful for that. And hopefully they can get something out of this course um, to help them just take each day at a time. And I know we all wanna go and get back to normality, but sometimes normality takes time. Here's an example of mindfulness. I'm, I'm sitting down relaxing, um, trying to read a book or maybe I'm sitting down and in class listening to a mindfulness course and this thought from 20 years ago comes to my mind and it's a bad thought. Maybe it's reminding me of something that I've done a long time ago that I just hate myself for doing. And I let this, this feeling just take me out of my present moment and make me feel bad. That's the situation of not living in the present moment because what we just did was we allowed a negative past thought feeling or emotion come into our future life and make us feel bad. Even though that situation happened years ago, months ago. And the people we hurt or whatever we experience is long gone. But we just allowed that thought, that feeling, that emotion to creep into our mind and destroy our present happiness. That's what mindfulness is all about. It's about living in the present moment and not allowing that situation to happen. And as we know, it happens to the best of us. We all feel and remember things that we don't want to. We think about the things we did and said, bad experiences that happened to us and we let it eat us up. But welcome to mindfulness. When mindful, we become aware of that thought that just tried to creep up in our mind. And we say, okay, I see you, I remember you and I am not that person no more. I will never do that no more. Or maybe I am not that weak person no more. I will not let you abuse me no more, you know? And that's mindfulness. And then we come back to our present moment. We are aware of that thought. We are aware of the feeling that it tried to bring to us in that moment, and we shut it down. Because again, we become the thoughts that we feed. So we can have a thought, but we wanna ensure that we are not feeding that negative thought. Be aware of it. Be mindful of it, but don't feed the beast. Don't feed that negativity. Positivity, let it on in. Negativity, exhale it out, it gots to go. Also, an example of being mindful in the present day, the present moment, is we're going through what we're going through right now, again, COVID-19, and we say, okay, I got $20,000, $10,000, $1,500, whatever the amount may be, saved up in a bank. And now I'm worried about six months from now, if I don't get a job by then, I'm not gonna have any more money saved up here to do this and that. And we start to worry and live six months from now, opposed to being content with having the 1,500, the 5,000, the 20,000 in the bank. That is living in the present moment. At this present moment, I have enough money to pay my bills. At this present moment, I have so-and-so money is coming in. I have the unemployment coming in. I got the stimulus checks coming in. I got my disability checks coming in. Whatever you may have coming in right now, even though we know that debt income may dry up eventually, but we have it coming in right now. 
And in addition to that, we have money saved up. In addition to that, we may even have some credit cards with a nice balance left. So why are we worrying? Because we worry that it's going to dry up. And what that worrying does is it takes us away from our present moment of happiness. Because at this present moment, the mortgage is paid, the utilities are paid, we have food on the table. Even though we're spending from our savings every month and our savings account is getting smaller and smaller, we still have it. See that there? So we are still happy and content because we are able to put a roof over our head for this month. We are able to buy food for our house for this week. We are able to pay the utilities for, for this month. But we go ahead to the future and say, but six months from now, three months from now, I might not be able to. Now what I'm gonna do? What I'm gonna do then? And we all know, half of the fears and anxieties we had about the future, if not all of them, never manifested. Have you noticed that? Half the things we worried about, about not being able to pay, about not being able to do, never manifest. Our fears of the future and the negative that, that what might happen, our fears of the future of what might be, often never becomes a reality. And we look back and say, I spent that whole weekend, I spent that whole year, that whole month stressing over something that never happened. Because as long as we do what we need to do, as long as we work, as long as we are out here doing things to be productive, to make sure, to ensure that in the future we have a way, what we are doing right now may not manifest right now. Meaning the things that we are doing to secure our future three months from now, six months from now may not show today. But wait till next week, wait till next month. You do what you need to do and those actions will manifest and will prosper. I call this a seed planet. We are planting a seed by being productive today in our lives by reading a book, by applying for a job, by getting a skill, not knowing if I'm gonna get a job for this skill, but you are doing what you need to do for the future. As long as we are doing what we need to do the future the future often works itself out for the best. So that is living in a present moment. Living in a present moment of what you have and what you are able to do right now. And right now we are comfortable. We got internet. We are able to sit and relax and watch this. The negative insights that we create in our mind doesn't have to be forefront in our minds. The power of attraction is real. We manifest our future. And if we fear we're not gonna make it, and we start to believe that fear that we're not gonna make it, what we're doing is we're telling the energies of the universe and we're telling every cell in our bodies that we're not gonna make it. If we start to feel it, we start to believe it, and our bodies, our facial expressions, our attitudes start to show it. Because not making it and not feeling successful and not feeling comfortable in life shows on you. You're not gonna be poor, have nothing, and look happy and, and enthusiastic when we feel beat down, when we feel like we're not gonna make it, when we feel like we lost everything and there's no way to get it back, it shows all over our persona. It shows in the way we speak. So even if you had an interview, or even if you was to be speaking with someone who was in a position to offer you a job, because of our demeanor of not feeling optimistic, of looking down, of looking unhopeful, that person who you could have met that day, who, have, who may have could given you a lead to a good job, because we felt no one's gonna hire me, I'm not gonna never make it. This COVID-19 is gonna get the best of me. Because we felt it and we believed it and it showed in our energies, we didn't get that job. Because again, the power of attraction is real. And that's what I'm here to say. The power of attraction is real. <sighs> As I'm saying it, I feel it, I believe it. It's just, look. The energy is just vibrating. The Kundalini experience. Kundalini is just, you can feel it. You, that vibe, that energy, it goes from head to toe throughout your head into the universe. We got this. This is real. You know. COVID-19 is also real. It is. And we're going to beat this. And we're going to continue to find ways to overcome it. We spent a lot of time today talking about mindfulness and being mindful of Mindful of how we feel, of our thoughts, of our feelings. Mindful of how we speak to ourselves. Mindful of believing that we're going to succeed and being mindful. Mindfulness-based stress reduction. Reducing the stress. 
on ourselves by being mindful of how we feel and how we can handle the situation. Being mindful, being aware. May we go inward here. If we are lying down, closing our eyes, gazing downward. If we are in a seated pose, closing our eyes or gazing our eyes downward towards the floor, towards the earth. Inhale. Exhale through the mouth. Noticing how your body's relaxed. If you are lying in your bed, maybe you can stretch your body by doing a reclined spinal twist. Simply relaxing your body in your bed. If we are in a seated position, maybe we can find ourselves. Sit it in an easy seat. Our legs are folded in front of us. Gazing downward as we take our right hand and slightly bring it behind our backs next to our buttocks. Feeling that seated spinal twist as we softly gaze over our right shoulder, feeling our bodies relax here, completely relaxing, going inward in our seated twist, gazing over our right shoulder, relaxing our bodies, knowing how this feels, keeping our eyes gazed downward, simply being aware. Next breath, bring our bodies back to center, finding ourselves back in our easy seat. Exhale and seated twist opposite side. Left hand goes behind our backs, behind our bodies. Slightly gazing over our left shoulder, noticing how that feels, relaxing the body. Going inward, keeping our eyes gazed downward. Next breath, coming back to center, relaxing the body. Noticing how we feel, using our shoulders, shrugging our shoulders up towards our ears forward, allowing our shoulders to fall back down, nice and easy with control. Lifting our shoulders back up towards our ears, allowing them to fall back downwards forward, forward shoulder shrugs. Shoulders up towards the air, allowing it to fall forward. Shoulders back up towards the ears, holding them, allowing our shoulders to fall backwards, feeling our bodies relax, loosening our shoulders. Shoulders up towards the ears, rolling our shoulders towards the back. Shoulders up towards the ears, rolling our shoulders towards the back. Finding our relaxation here. Our hands are relaxing on our legs as we gaze downward. If you choose, you can bring your hands together at heart center if you choose. Or simply relax your hands downward any way you choose. Keeping our eyes down, keeping our eyes gaze downward. Tummy is nice and tight. Spinal cord is nice and long. Shoulders are nice and tall. Using this time to go inward and self-reflect. Being aware of how we are feeling. Always without judgment. Simply noticing, simply being in a present moment.
allowing our shoulders to relax downward even more away from my ears. Shoulders go downward, completely relaxing our bodies, finding our comfort and our peace and our contentment here in this present moment. As we softly open up our eyes and gazing forward. I would like to thank you so much for joining me here today. I look forward to seeing you next week on the mat. I ask that throughout the week, throughout our days, that we continue to practice being mindful of our feelings, thoughts, and emotions. And being mindful of how situations and people and thoughts make us feel. Being aware and taking notice is the first step to positive change. Peace and blessings be to you. Thank you so much for joining and I will see you next week in our second session. Have a great evening. Thank you so much. I invite you to meditate here for a little while longer, using the time to critique and simply relax our minds and our bodies here today. <laughs>